this video, we're gonna talk about how you can set up your first campaign map in Entreport. If you're a beginner and you're just trying to figure out how to use Entreport, this is the video for you. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through starting with a completely from scratch campaign map, and we're gonna build our first campaign or email automation in Entreport. So if you stick around to the end of the video, I'll let you know the one type of autoresponder that you should use instead of Entreport if you have not purchased Entreport yet and you're thinking about building it. And I will tell you the best type of business for using Entreport and then the best type of business for using this alternative autoresponder I'm gonna to get to you at the end of this video. So if you guys are ready to learn about how to use Entreport's campaign map to build your first email automation, let's get to this. So I'm gonna share my screen real quick and you guys will see that I already have Entreport up. And so to get into the campaign map, you're gonna go into contacts, campaigns. And once we're in here, you can see all the campaigns that are already built. We're just gonna click new campaign. And then you're gonna see a bunch of templates come up for the new campaign. You can see down here, there's lead capture, install seminar, one click email survey. They have a ton of great uh, templates, which are nice because you can see how they've built the template so that you can see what triggers uh, and actions and goals they're using to get a specific result. And you can see that they have a quick description. For example, here on the SMS lead capture and follow up uh, new version template, it says capture leads by having prospects text your Entreport SMS number for a lead magnet with automated response to capture all their information and deliver the lead magnet. So if you go in here, you'll see how they've set it up. And if you go through enough of these, you'll get an idea of how to set up just about any type of uh, email automation because you'll have seen how they set up all their triggers and actions and goals. But anyway, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up a new campaign. And what you'll see here is first, you'll see that people can be added to the campaign manually. And that's the only thing that's going to be in uh, the blank campaign canvas by default. So first what we're gonna wanna do is add a trigger for people to get automatically placed onto my new campaign. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go to this little plus button. You can see that it opens up to add a trigger. I'm gonna click add a trigger, <clears throat> so new trigger. Generally what this is gonna be is for most companies, it's gonna be some action that someone takes in terms of an opt-in to their email list, uh, you know, buying some type of product, in some way advancing in the sales process. So depending on what steps you have in your sales process, whether that's, you know, visiting a product page. Um, so, so just for example, uh, something that I would use commonly would be, you know, visits website, uh, visits product page. These are, these are uh, steps people take that you can, you know, will generally remarket to with things like paid advertising. But since this is an email list, somebody has to have already opted in. So once somebody's opted in, if you have something like Entreport tracking on your site, once they're on your email list, you could have a trigger like opted in, uh, visited a product page after the opt-in, uh, started to check out and abandoned their cart. There's all these different types of triggers that you can use. So for us, <clears throat> loaded up in this account that I'm using for uh, one of the clients I'm working with, <laughs> if I were to go add a trigger, you can see right here, contact is created. So a new, uh, there's a new person input in your database. Uh, field is updated, meaning if there, uh, if you have a field for something like products purchased, you know, and another product is added into that field and that's updated, you can use that as a trigger. Uh, let's see another one that we use commonly. Okay, contact is removed from tag. So if you have a tag for, uh, you know, a certain amount of days post-purchase and then they're removed from that, you know, they can get input onto a list. Today is a specific date. So you can do something like 20 days after their purchase, you know, if today is that date, they're then uh, added onto this campaign. So you can see how all these things, uh, you know, could help us. I'm just going to use the most common one here real quick as an example. So product is purchased. You will then have a database of products you've entered for your business. We'll get into that in a different video, but assuming you already have products, I click here on the drop down, And in our case, you'll see just, you know, hundreds of products that we have. So it could be any one of these. And then you'll see optionally, you can add another condition, which is great because, you know, for instance, contact has a tag, the 
you know, not from us. Uh, there's so many different things you can do here. Uh, pages they have viewed, you know, viewed certain pages and not other pages. And again, these are optional, but it just gives you an idea of all the different options you have for conditions. So if you are setting these up again, you'll need products. You'd need products loaded in your database. And then there's, you know, with all the different triggers and conditions, there's an infinite number of combinations. So when you're going on these, this is something that you'll have to work through on an individual basis. And one of the nice things is that in Entreport, they have uh, right here over in the corner, uh, on this question mark and the information, they have extremely responsive customer service who will actually schedule a call with you and jump on a video chat uh, almost live. About five minutes after you schedule a call, you can get someone on video chat most hours of the day. So if you have specific questions about triggers and conditions, that's something that Entreport customer service uh, is really great about helping you with. So anyway, we have our first automated trigger here where the product is purchased. And what you'll notice is that we now have the campaign split up into these two pieces uh, for, the, for the people that were manually added and automatically added based on this trigger. So what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna add a way for people to basically be consolidated onto one list. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this in the easiest manner possible. I'm going to add this go to which I'll use here in a sec to link these two entrance points to this campaign map. So the next thing I'm going to do is when someone's added to this list, um, I'm just going to have them wait here. <laughs> so we're going to go into wait and I'm going to say, okay, they're not going to wait forever. They're going to wait till some time passes. I'm going to leave that as one day and then we're going to leave that. You can see the description was automatically updated to reflect that time period. Wait one day. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just putting this in so that I have a nice spot to connect this go to and you'll see right here if someone's manually added they'll go to that wait point and they'll be right there with everyone that was uh, automatically added based on the trigger waiting one day so at this point we can take a number of actions generally what we'll do is after a wait period you know we might send our first email so if someone purchased a product you know we might wait uh, we might not wait we might immediately send them an email but after that first email we'll probably wait a certain period of time like a day or two days and then send another email uh, this example after a purchase could be a post purchase sequence. So you can see we have an option here for send an email, which when we add it to the campaign, you can see right here, uh, it has an option to, you can go in and edit this email or you can pick from this drop down uh, for, you know, to pick from emails that you've already used. And you can see here a new message where you can add a new email template, or you can go and add any of the emails that you already have preloaded that you've created in the uh, email builder. So we're going to leave that for now and we're going to delete that. <laughs> and you can see here, when you go to delete a campaign map, you have two main options, delete only this item or delete this item and everything below it. So for example, if I come back here to the map, if I had a number of different uh, items coming down here and branching out into different directions, but they both linked to this uh, send email up higher in the campaign and I went to delete it, you have to make sure that you're paying close attention to what you're deleting because if I were to then delete this email and everything below it, the entire track would be gone. So that's another thing in Entreport that's a great feature, something you have to be aware of when you're editing. So in this case, I'm gonna delete this item. Now I have this blank template again. So I'm gonna go in here and we're gonna go over some of the options really quick. So you're gonna have popular, actions, filters, and advanced. So popular, as you might guess, is just a combination of all the different elements the ones that are most commonly used, you know, based on uh, what Entreport is registering in their system. Actions, these are going to be the most common uh, actions you're going to take. And they're, for the most part, they're self-explanatory. One thing that's going to make actions a little bit more complicated is when you see these, uh, these they're basically gonna gonna do some very different things. So I'll use these two for an example: add to campaign and remove from campaign. When you use one of these, they're gonna be based on the tags that these uh, users have in your database. So in Entreport, the way it works is you have a bunch of different tags for the date someone was added, the country they're from, all this different information about your users, and options that uh, Entreport takes on the campaign map are based on elements in your user account, so different tags they have. So most of the actions you're gonna take on someone are gonna be a specific action based on whether or not they have a tag, and you're gonna have options for the conditions for those tags, or you're gonna have options like this, update, contact, or change tag, where you're gonna change some information field in the contact, 
and there are going to be a bunch of different default pieces of information. Like I mentioned, the date they registered, the country they're from, but then you're also going to have additional tags that are not necessarily defaults, meaning not everyone in your database is going to have one of these tags. You can add and subtract them from those user profiles in order to indicate additional information that you can use on these campaign maps as conditional uh, or conditions basically to filter people down through your campaigns. So between the basic fields uh, that all your users will have and your tags, again, you have a unlimited amount of options for filtering people uh, to go down these different conditional paths you set up. And if you understand that, the basic pieces of information and that each contact will have, as well as these additional tags, you can understand how all these different actions can take place. So pause or unpause campaign is going to be based on a piece of information in your user account or an additional tag that you set up. Uh, send an email is going to be the same thing. People going down a certain path, it will automatically send an email you choose. Pretty much all of these are going to be based on that. And the two big ones here that are going to allow you to change the condition for the users are going to be update contact. And I'll give you an example of how that works. So you're going to say update a certain field and you know the description, what's happening. So for example, first name, if we want to update the first name, uh, you know what we're going to update it to, and then that's what's going to happen when somebody uh, you know, goes, goes through this action. Uh, what will be another one? So region, region's a good one. Uh, so add a region field. We're going to update the contact and, you know, say everyone that's going through this campaign map is now from Canada. Obviously we're not going to use that, but that's an example of a way that you can, while you're on a campaign map, actually update your contacts in your database. Okay. So right here, I'm going to go from wait one day to send an email and then goal is reached. So I'm going to move someone to this goal point on the map, basically anytime that purchase product. So let's say, for example, this is a cart abandon email sequence. I'm going to send them an email. I'm going to wait here and Basically, you're going to wait until a product is purchased. Once a product is purchased, you're then going to remove the person from this campaign. So this is useful because if I have a series of emails and say, you know, one that's sent when they abandon their cart, one that's sent a day later, one that's sent a couple days later as a reminder, but I have a goal for a product is purchased on the campaign, no matter where someone is at on the campaign, they're going to be removed from this list once I have the goal of product is purchased. So I can, uh, for example, if I had a abandoned cart tag added to the person uh, to put them onto this campaign and that was a trigger, I could then uh, have this goal here, which would automatically, no matter where they're at on this post uh, or abandoned cart email sequence, it would move them to the goal. Uh, so, you know, they would no longer be getting the emails that are on this sequence. And then after that, I could have a couple things happen. One of them would be change tags. So I could change that tag from a, you know, abandoned cart tag to a, you know, purchase tag, which would then take them. And if I had a trigger for a uh, post purchase, it would then, you know, add a post purchase tag and move them to my post purchase list. If this was the abandoned cart list. And then I would have this end. And this end doesn't do anything to the contact, but it basically signifies to anyone reading this. It makes it a little more human readable so that they know that, yeah, this is the end of the uh, sequence. So just to recap, let's pretend real quick that this is a product abandoned sequence. So right here, if I had a, if I, instead of using a trigger that uh, product is purchased, I had a trigger for tag equals abandoned cart in my system, I could set it on Entreport so that when someone leaves my cart, you know, shopping cart system, that adds a tag to them saying abandoned cart. If I had a trigger for them to come on abandoned cart and they came on this sequence, I could then have them wait one day before sending an email. And I could go through my whole sequence using these wait periods and emails. And I could also have a product is purchased goal so that if this was an abandoned cart email sequence, at any point during the sequence, no matter where they are, if they purchase a product, they're automatically moved to the end of the sequence right here. Their tag is changed from abandoned cart to purchase product and the sequence ends. The user would then be moved 
to whatever sequence I had that had a trigger of, you know, my tag for purchase product and I could continue on with the post purchase sequence. Similarly, if I was on a post purchase sequence, I could have a goal of purchase another product. So purchase any products more than one and I can move them to the end of that sequence as a goal and I could change their tag from, uh, post-purchase to repeat post-purchase. And I can move them from the post-purchase sequence to a repeat post-purchase sequence. And all these things would be done with a change of tag and a goal on the campaign map. And each time a goal is reached where I want them to leave the campaign map, I need to specify that that's my goal. And then my tag for that user will change from whatever it was to whatever the new status is, whether that's abandoned cart to now post-purchase sequence or post-purchase sequence to repeat post-purchase sequence. All those things can be done with the removal or addition of a tag. So I hope that kind of makes sense. You really need to understand what fields you're using, meaning what uh, information you have on all your customers in the database, as well as what tags you're gonna use. And you need to plan that out. And the last thing that you need to understand about Entreport is you need to know how Entreport is integrating with your shopping cart system. So whether that's uh, Magento, or Shopify, or WooCommerce, you need to understand how those systems send information to Entreport so that whatever information you're getting sent from your, your shopping cart, you know you will be able to use as triggers and tags. Because one of the things you need to plan out before you do your campaign is how you're gonna get these signals from your shopping cart system. So if you have a custom designed shopping cart system and you're not sure what signals it's sending in terms of things like abandoned cart, uh, purchase a product, or keeping track of information on users like how many products they purchase, you need to kind of plan that out in your head and make sure that that integration actually takes place between your shopping cart system and the Entreport uh, email system. So if you have any questions about uh, how to use that or what integrations different shopping carts have with Entreport, feel free to leave a comment below asking me about it. Uh, if you want, you can reach out. I would be happy to help anyone that's having issues with Entreport. I noticed there are not a lot of good resources for help outside of uh, Entreport's knowledge base, which is, it is good, but there's definitely room for improvement there. The last thing I'll say about Entreport is that they have fantastic customer service uh, for people that do have an active subscription and you can access that customer service uh, inside. You can see the campaign map right here in the corner. So again, if you have any questions, make sure to leave a comment below, make sure to like and subscribe this video. And at the start of the video, I promised that I talk about a alternative autoresponder system you can use. That alternative autoresponder system that I would recommend, believe it or not, is Market Hero. And Market Hero is a new autoresponder system I like. It has a, you can see here, this is their campaign map. It's very similar to the design of the campaign map in Entreport, just in terms of the way that the different elements connect. But the user interface is much simpler. And if you're a new business and you need an autoresponder and you don't need all the additional features that Entreport has uh, in terms of you know, their page builder, their form builder, you don't need all those other things, I'd recommend using Market Hero. It's gonna be a lot simpler to get started with. They have much better, more comprehensive tutorials that are gonna make it easier for you to learn their version of a campaign map. If you do have Entreport, don't worry, it's a feature-rich, amazing piece of software. It just has a little bit steeper learning curve than something like Market Hero. So again, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you on the next tutorial.